So this shape right here, keep in mind, to find that shape, I'm going to project back, right? I can do this. And I find this one right here. Those relate top and bottom. So this shape is going to be this shape. Now in this, is it true size and shape, or is it inclined, or is it oblique? Some, and don't worry if you think you're looking kind of weird or something. Grab something and start rotating with it. Pencils work great for lines and points. Um, something like an eraser works great for cubes. So, in essence, if I take this guy right here and I look at, since we don't have this view, I'm going to take this and I transmit it over this way. I see two lines, right? Here I've got two lines also. Okay, one's on top of the other. So as I come back, I'm now seeing this on the other side. Both of them are true size and shape. So this is true size. That's true size. This top piece right here, there is my edge right there. That guy's true size. So in essence, we've got one inclined plane. All the other planes are normal planes on this object. Now, some other things that might help you as you're looking. When you get to those inclined planes, you want to start looking at those laws 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Because those ones are the ones that will help you. I think specifically law 5, no, it's law, which one has similar? That's 7. Law 7 has similar shapes. You're going to see that with obliques and inclines. And in fact, this shape right here, it's the exact same shape you see right here. It's exactly the same. Why? Because this angle is 45. Well, we keep seeing that 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? But it's the same shape, it's just rotated to a different orientation. So we're going to deal with that. Now when I draw this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this bottom plate right here because it's going to give me my full width, full depth. Then I'm going to go to the incline plane and do that because that's going to drive some of my other shapes and then I'll come in and analyze all the other shapes at the end. So again, I'm going to start full width, full depth, then you know, I'm going to go to my incline plane and then the, all the rest of it. So let's go over here and do that. First thing I want to do is determine where I'm going to put my top view. And I'm just going to put it right here. Then I'm going to draw my meter line. It's going to go from here. And my angle is 45 degrees. And just make sure that goes past your edge. For full depth, then I just come up to my meter line, throw it over. Full width, I bring it from my front view. Okay. So there I sit. Okay, there it is. Now we're going to deal with the incline plane here. So I see it from here to here, okay. or it goes full width. And then I see the individual components here. So let's start dealing with this guy. So first off, I'm going to go on the top. Here's my width from here to here. And I'm going to be dealing with just this part, because that goes from here down. So I can bring my depth over. I've already got the outside edge. Oh, here I'm getting into that. Hold on. I need to make sure. I must have had some isometric drawing going on with this thing. Polar track, yes, let's go to 90 degrees. Fine, okay, so we need this one. Okay. So there it is, so it goes from here to here is that edge. So 
let me trim this up. I just need that portion right there. So that is this part right here. Now from there I come into this little nose. The nose is defined in the front view by this line right here and this line right here. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to bring width. There's my width of it. Then I'm going to bring my depth. My depth goes from here, which I've already got out here, is that line, to here. So I'll bring this line straight up and over. And now I can trim this up. So it's going to go right there. Let me kind of, again, keep yourself clean, folks. You're going to get a lot of lines in a hurry. Keep yourself clean. So that's my nose. And then we have this bottom part, which is coming on the same angle. Okay, so I'll just draw a line straight back and turn it up. So that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, and we can finish line lengths. Okay. So there is that inclined plane in the top U. Now from there, what I then want to do is kind of finish it up. So this part right here is already all defined because that's this bottom piece. So it goes from here to here and full width. So from there, let's see. Kind of confused all the same. Yeah, from there to back to there. So that's this bottom piece right here. The only one I still need to deal with is this guy right here. So as it comes across. And that one goes, keep in mind that it is shown from here up this edge. So again, the depth of it will go from here to here. You see on the top of this. So again, I'll bring that up all the way across and it runs from here to here. Okay, so it's that little segment right there that I see. And let me just trim this guy up. And I need to fix that. That goes to that end point. Okay, and that's that flat piece that sits right on the top here that you see right here. And that's an end result. I think the rest of it is done. Okay, now again, you're looking at it, you see true size, true size, or short. Yep, we got the same result as this. Any others? Okay. All right, with that said, um, G4. Let's just kind of look at those real quick and see if we can discuss these. Um, there's G4. Okay, so here you're doing some different ones. Number 19. I just want to discuss these real quick while we've got them out. take 19 and see if we can't predict a little bit about how it's going to look. First thing you want to do is try and identify your shapes and your planes. Um, do you see anything that stands out at you that's kind of weird? This guy right here. See that slanted line? 
Okay, those should those should pop and say, oh, I got an incline, or an oblique. Okay, since I see this as an edge, it's going to be an incline. And so what that means is that this surface over here, this is foreshortened. So you're going to be dealing with an inclined plane on this. It is a little bit tricky, but don't make it trickier than it has to be. And this hidden line kind of throws a little wrinkle at you. That's this little shelf that's been cut in here. Now, what's this plane? Is it true size? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one's true size. Why? Because I see it here. There's the edge. Okay. And again, you can grab those things and start turning them and see. Okay, you know, this edge right here is this edge. The one I can't see that's in the back is that edge, and you see it when you turn. So again, we've got that prism that's got four lines, and half of them are buried on you, and you have to understand they're there. Is this a true size shape? Mm -hmm. Yep. How do you know that? Mary? So you go to the Yeah, edge view, right? So you see that? What about these two? They're true size, true size. Therefore, this guy. There's the edge. True size. This one we already talked about. That's true size. So I would go through this exercise. You know what you're looking at, right? All normals, one incline. Then we can go ahead and project that. Again, incline, do you think you're going to see a shape pretty similar to this in the top view? Yeah, it's going to look real similar. Maybe that will help you do that. What's the next one? Uh, before we leave this, any questions or thoughts on it? And okay, next one's 23. cylinder. So the first thing you always ask yourself with a cylinder, am I looking parallel or perpendicular to that long axis? Where's my long axis on this guy? It's right here. Right? This is a truncated cylinder. What angle is it? It's 45. It's going from box to box. Those are square boxes. It's a 45 degree cut. What's this shape going to be? Circle. It's going to be a circle. Even though that is truncated, in the front view, you are looking parallel to the long axis. It will always be a circle. Now, when I go to the top view up here, that's like I'm looking that way. I'm looking perpendicular to the long axis, but my cut is 45. Tell you what, folks, you're getting a circle up here. Aren't you? We just went over this. Yeah, you are. Okay, from there, all you need to do is then track these cuts. And this is a true size cut, right? I've got an edge view and an edge view. Okay. So this shape's going to be true size up here. This one, same thing. I'm going to see a true size shape because I've got edge. Um, let's see, yeah, edge, that's that edge. I've got a little hidden line down here that lines up with that. That's edge, edge. That's true size, that's true size, that's true size. This other hidden line is this one. You see an edge in both of them. You're going to see planes or face views of those up here. So this guy's a little tricky. Do you draw your circle first? This one yeah. I'll tell you, I, I will, I'll project this one for you tomorrow. Okay. But I want you to mess with it first yourself. And maybe you'll get here, maybe you won't. 
like that. Because this, this one's a good exercise in tracking off of center lines and limiting elements. I, I really like this drawing to make you think and understand how orthographic projection works with cylinders. But for now, what you got to remember, foreshortened, inclined, but it's a cylinder. So I'm going to get a circle up here since it cuts 45 degrees and I'm looking perpendicular along axis. Um, next one. Any questions on this before we leave it? Next one's 28. Let's see, how do I get this book to hold? Can you see that? I can't see it from over where I'm at. Let me turn that light off. That helps. Another cylinder, folks. But first thing we want to do is look for the stuff that's going to pop. This guy right here. Incline. Okay, we're mix mixing it up. You've done the top view for pretty much everything to this point, right? Here you're doing the right side view. Okay. All right, so cylinder, positive cylinder, negative cylinder. You see I'm here, positive cylinder with limiting elements, negative cylinder with hidden lines. Those two will project over into this view pretty much identical. Why? Because I've got the circular view and the rectangular. This will be a rectangular view, again, of those cylinders. Um, this guy right here. A truncated cylinder. 